Cryptography came into use thousands of years ago, and since then has been constantly developing along with human civilization. It has significantly influenced human society, and sometimes even the course of history. Today, cryptography has become an important technology in the Internet society, which each individual relies on. One typical example is the RSA crypto scheme. It's often used in net shopping. A net shop prepares a public key containing the product N of two large primes P and Q. The net shop publishes this product N for its customers but keeps the numbers P and Q secret. The customer encrypts his credit card number and purchase information with the public key and sends the encrypted data to the net shop. The net shop then derives a private key from the two primes by simple calculation to decrypt this data. Let's assume that a malicious hacker eavesdropped on the cipher test. The hacker knows the public key, but has no idea of the private key. For decryption, the hacker needs to factorize N to find the two primes P and Q. This prime number factorization is a time-consuming task when N is large. Around the end of the last century, it was said that even the most powerful computers would take thousands of years to factorize a 200-digit number. Since then, rapid progress has been made in both soft and hardware. The article shown here reports on an experiment conducted in December 2009, where an international team of researchers succeeded in cracking a 768-bit RSA key within only two years using a novel decryption algorithm and a cluster of personal computers. And who knows, maybe there is an organization somewhere in this world that already uses even more powerful algorithms and computers. If a military intelligence had a method of breaking longer keys, they would never announce this fact. For that reason, the RSA scheme nowadays employs public keys with at least 1,024 bits. In recent years, fiber tapping devices have become readily available on the market, and it's indeed easy for hackers to tap the signal of a fiber. It's been actually reported that the fiber networks of some U.S. investment firms and Frankfurt Airport were intercepted in the past. Therefore, encryption is a must to guarantee safe transmission of sensitive data. Among all the methods of encryption ever devised, only one has been mathematically proven to be completely secure. It's called one-time pad. The key should be used only once and needs to be as long as the message to be sent. Although one-time pad is the ideal encryption method, the efficient distribution of such long keys remains an issue. In 1984, quantum key distribution, or for short, QKD, was proposed for the safe delivery of one-time pad. The most remarkable feature of QKD is the ability to detect any eavesdropping attempt on an optical fiber. In QKD, each bit of key information is carried by a single photon, which is the elementary energy particle of light and cannot be divided further. Any attempt of measuring a photon inevitably induces some change in the photon's state due to the uncertainty principle. This makes QKD secure against eavesdropping. The combination of QKD and one-time pad represents the so-called quantum cryptographic system. Unlike conventional schemes, the quantum cryptographic system will never be threatened by any future computer or hacking technology. Here you see a QKD system with its transmitter and receiver. The transmitter modulates the photon state to encode 0 or 1 randomly and sends the modulated photons through a fiber. Due to the transmission loss, only a fraction of them arrive at the receiver. After the receiver has accumulated a large enough sequence of photon detections, the system performs error correction and privacy amplification to distill a secure key. 
During this distillation process, the number of dangerous insecure bits in a secret key can be completely removed, and the remaining secure key can then be stored in a PC and be used at any time. We are now tapping a small fraction of the photon stream in a fiber. We guide the photons to a photodetector and measure them. At the same time, we resend some other photons, trying carefully to hide our attack. However, the receiver immediately notices a disturbance by our attempt, which is reflected by the increase in the bit error rate. By switching to another secure fiber link, the transmission can go on unimpeded. Only when the error rate is below a certain threshold can the channel be considered secure. Research and development of QKD has been rapidly accelerating since the mid-1990s. Today, many institutes and companies around the world are working on the research, development and commercialization of QKD. It will, however, take some more time until its widespread deployment. The major obstacle is the inevitable energy loss of light in optical fibers. For instance, over a distance of 50 kilometers, even with the best available fibers on the market, only one out of 10 photons will, on average, reach the receiver, determining the upper limit of the key generation rate. Since optical amplification cannot be applied to QKD, developers currently adopt classical key encapsulation to relay the key over several QKD links, not longer than 50 kilometers, assuming that the relay nodes can be trusted and are physically protected. During the last few years, NICT and its partners have been working hard to accomplish faster QKD over longer distances. Today, in 2010, the distance of 50 kilometers can be bridged with key generation rates of a few hundred kilobits per second. This corresponds to a level that is fast enough to allow one-time pad encryption of video data for teleconferencing. At NICT's headquarters in Kogane, in the western suburb of Tokyo, the researchers are demonstrating the technology. They are sending a signal to the Otimachi node in the center of Tokyo. The link distance is about 45 kilometers, and the data rate is getting close to 1 megabits per second, which allows teleconferencing in a stress-free manner. It looks like an ordinary video transmission, but in fact, the video data is encrypted with QKD. To the best of our knowledge, in 2010, there exists nowhere a comparable encryption system that transmits real-time QKD encrypted video data at similar rates. At present, we grasp only a small part of the possibilities that the merger of quantum mechanics and information science will bring about. But in the future, outcomes of this merger will appear in many different aspects of our lives. Today, we take on the challenges of tomorrow to make each quantum communication dream come true.